Uh, now we come to the uh, second part, uh, also very exciting part of the uh, today's forum. Earlier, Bruce and Raju talked about all these uh, wonderful uh, developments in the uh, in the last uh, 20 years in precision medicine. Now, obviously, this is because of the uh, all the great effort made in the uh, fundamental research and clinical research. But there's another very important elements in translating these research results into real drugs. So in between, the important step is a, there's a bridge there that need to be come across from a research lab to commercialization, to entrepreneurship. So our next speaker, uh, Dr. Su Jin Ba, is gonna tell us about how to bridge research from academia to entrepreneurship, particularly for precision cancer medicine. And Dr. Ba is currently the uh, president and CEO of the uh, National Foundation for Cancer Research. Uh, she received her bachelor degree from Beijing University and PhD from the University of Pennsylvania. And after working in the uh, pharmaceutical industry for a few years, he joined the uh, National Foundation for Cancer Research. And she led the establishment of the NFCR's annual St. George Prize for Progress in Cancer Research, and has served continuously as a co-chair of the selection committee, which consists of leaders in academia and pharmaceutical sectors. Dr. Ba is also the founder and CEO of the Asian Fund for Cancer Research, AFCR, where CTU is honored to have the uh, partnership established today. She co-founded and served as a founding CEO of Aim High Accelerator Fund, so which is a, uh, a uh, early stage investment fund or impact investment fund focused on advancing oncology startups through venture philanthropy and impact investment. Dr. Ba was named as one of the uh, top 300 women leaders in global health in 2015. So without further ado, let's uh, welcome Dr. Ba to uh, share with us about the uh, cancer entrepreneurship. Please. Thank you, Michael, for the kind introduction. So you have heard the wonderful scientific talks earlier this afternoon from Bruce and Raju. And uh, today I'm going to share something behind, behind the scene of uh, developing the drugs. Basically, after the discoveries are made, what can we do what, uh, to take the discoveries and make the drugs that can help patients. Raju talk about it, Bruce talk about it. And what kind of challenges, uh, obstacles we have to deal with and uh, uh, how to overcome this? It was messed up. Okay, all right. Um, so besides today, I talk about what elements are involved in um, bridging research from acad uh, academic sectors to cancer se um, enter entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, sorry. Um, I also want to share a global partner network to support high, high risk and high impact uh, cancer research and uh, share how each of us can work together and make cures possible, not only from research discovery, but all spectrum of things that we can do. Hopefully, I can share with you, not only you can become uh, brilliant researchers and uh, faculty members, there are many wonderful career opportunities all of you can uh, pursue that are all part of the cures spectrum. And, and um, you heard uh, uh, me um, introduction about the AFCR earlier, so I won't go into details, but um, from this picture, you can see we supported uh, researchers, and we also supported um, entre uh, entrepreneurship 
and a biotech company. On the top of um, uh, the picture, there is one company that actually won one of the prices, the investment from AFCR, and that's the uh, RBO Bio located in Science uh, Park. And uh, basically, I'm hoping from today, and you can consider NFC, uh, AFCR as well as NFCR and AIM High to be part of your ecosystem and your knowledge base that uh, when you need it um, um, to uh, access to knowledge, to uh, lectures, and uh, to advisors, and to opportunities to get investment, you can actually look um, to us for, uh, as a part of your partners. And I'd like you to talk about the type of research programs uh, AFCR uh, supports. And as um, um, I mentioned earlier, uh, AFCR supports the traditional academic research programs. And uh, we usually differentiate from other funding agencies in a way that we provide the seed money for scientists to explore and to uh, um, uh, start uh, new ideas, new frontiers, and, new, and uh, they can pursue their new hypotheses. And usually the scientists do not have to pre, uh, produce and show the preliminary data. Many government funding, funding agencies will require scientists in their funding proposal to show the preliminary data, show some um, proof of uh, uh, concept, in order for them to give you the funding. And the AFCR actually together with um, uh, NFCR uh, are the few charities that actually can give you the C money without data. As long as it's, um, it's reviewed uh, um, by the peer organization, um, peer um, members, uh, committee members, um, that they have the high potential for uh, uh, patient benefit and we are willing to take a risk. And usually we require uh, the scientists to, uh, to be a, um, collaborating, a collaborating team. So that is one thing that we uh, are different is we like to promote the productive uh, collaboration. So this is a type of uh, uh, requirement for getting the research funding. And uh, we also uh, provide uh, research uh, grants to build an international collaborative uh, platform. And many of the critically needed platforms cannot generate a return on investment. So the investment uh, companies will not uh, pursue, and pharmaceutical companies probably will not uh, take on. But uh, since um, they are critically important, and the infrastructure capacity building, AFCR is one of the organizations that we will provide this type of uh, funding. Um, I encourage you to look at the GBM Agile. If you search on GBM Agile, that is the paradigm shifting um, adaptive research master protocol, biomarker driven uh, platform that we have helped uh, build. It took a good eight years to get this platform from the idea all the way to be operational. Eight years. And now we have this um, a system uh, test, uh, te testing drugs, six drugs simultaneously. And more than 1,600 GBM patients have been enrolled. And that's just one of the examples. Um, another um, very critical areas so that we decided to pursue and we think it's a high impact area is to promote um, early stage uh, oncology companies. And I want to share uh, today a mechanism that uh, we used uh, to promote um, uh, this area and encourage the faculty members uh, to pursue the entrepreneurship and um, uh, we, you know, with your discovery, you can you can actually launch uh, companies, and there is a mechanism platform uh, behind you to support you. And those uh, this slide just showed some of the top um, 
uh, institutions uh, we worked uh, with uh, in Asia and some of the um, global collaboration uh, platforms uh, that we work with. And so now I'm going to ask, um, switch the gear to share some of the background information on biomedical drug development. Some of you may not may, may know uh, some aspect, but I like to show in an overview way. You heard Bruce mention some drugs take, you know, 30 years, 40 years from the ideas, from the discussion, uh, the initial reporting all the way to the market, 30, 40 years. Why? Because it takes a lot of steps to bring one discovery um, and to take the discovery and turn it into a drug and get to patients. And many of uh, uh, those uh, efforts, endeavors will fail. So it's not, uh, not everything that you, you uh, discover will uh, turn into drugs, but uh, that's still a very noble and brave uh, endeavors that we all aspire to do. And even w uh, within the, uh, even after you file a patent and before you can get into patient uh, clinical trials, there is this uh, valley of the death, that's the preclinical studies um, that require lots of effort, lot of investments, three to seven years. And that is an area, a high risk, high failure, a high failure rate, and many of the investments, um, uh, investment firms uh, try to stay away from that stage, and they usually wanted to see some preliminary uh, clinical data uh, when the drugs get into phase one, phase two, and that's where they can come in, and where we believe that a nonprofit impact investment can play a role to facilitate the development of the preclinical studies. So, so we actually focus on um, the uh, on the range that for the company before they get to uh, phase one, before they get to raise uh, series A. And this is just uh, one way of illustrating how um, um, high risk it is to uh, get get from the target discovery to to launch a huge um, uh, risk. Um, only two percent of lab grape through uh, become drugs in long in ten to fifteen years. It's an after breakthrough. So, and this slide just showed again. There is a lot of uh, infliction of the value, but also lots of uh, valleys. So the valley of the death and uh, high risk, that's the areas that um, um, uh, throughout the drug development process. And like I said earlier, the AFCR and NFCR focus on helping the companies in the uh, valley of the death. And we really provide the scientists, uh, the entrepreneurs, uh, the preclinical uh, pre uh, research funding. Not only we put forward, we also bring seed uh, investors who share our um, belief and um, also share our passion and help those early stage on, on, uh, oncology companies. Um, once again, this just showed how uh, challenging it is to bring a drug um, from discovery to uh, um, the clinical trial, just those early stage and Lo tremendous amount of money needed, and the most important part is the first 15 million dollars. And we look at all of this, right? We we know uh, all the stories. Once the scientists discover um, uh, something, have a patent, and they oh, they really have a hard time to find uh, investment. Some are lucky, you know, and for example, for people like uh, Raju and Bruce, they are already established, so easier for them to find money. But for other non-proven um, uh, faculties, and they, they may have great uh, technologies, but if they 
don't have the uh, track record, it's very difficult to find the investment. So what we want to do is really try to change the uh, paradigm in our own way. You know, um, um, we needed to make sure uh, whatever we are funding that we can address the those the technologies address cancer patients and med needs. That's number one. That's what the uh, nonprofit mission is about. And then we want to make sure we uh, create a, cell, a new self-sustaining uh, ecosystem to fuel more uh, future breakthroughs. And um, we can we wanted to uh, focus on the uh, the. Valley of the Death area, bridge the Valley of the Death for early stage companies. So we need a new model. We need a paradigm shifting approach that uh, we can systematically transform and accelerate uh, innovations. And that is uh, why we form a global partner network to support uh, high risk and high impact cancer research and startups. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, in 2019, um, the Aim High Accelerator uh, Fund was uh, established with a capacity building uh, grant from the National Foundation for Cancer Research. This uh, organization's uh, goal, the mission, is to bridge the gap between research breakthroughs and clinical trials. And the, they focused on supporting early stage companies. And this is a nonprofit organization and works with AFCR, NFCR, and other uh, uh, nonprofit organizations and the seed investors. We have a very collaborative um, uh, model working with the seed investors to identify those um, uh, companies uh, with um, uh, the opportunities not only to do well, but do good. And we have a global advisory network to support entrepreneurs. You can see we have a, a Raju as a part of our network uh, review. Those are all the, for any given uh, oncology company opportunity coming to us, we have a panel of uh, uh, expertise to review. And um, um, they go through uh, series of evaluation and discussion before um, we actually make a, a decision whether you invest or not. But the difference between this process and the typical VC process is we actually share the insights and share the um, comments and uh, share the suggestions for the companies uh, to uh, improve. And instead of just a black box and saying, no, not interested. And um, we also have an oncology metaverse, and that hosted a lot of uh, KOL's uh, discussions and uh, presentations and the panel discussions uh, uh, for um, uh, researchers, uh, entrepreneurs, talk about the issues that you will deal with uh, during, uh, throughout the whole spectrum of cancer drug development. And also, we have um, annual gathering of uh, um, um, the researchers, entrepreneurs, and um, KOLs, investors. This is just uh, uh, some of the uh, pictures showing. We have the Global Summit, and Bruce and Raju are all part of the critical uh, mass and uh, advisors uh, that um, um, participating in those uh, global summit give a uh, wonderful, um, insightful talks. And you actually can access um, this uh, 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 oncology metaverse, we call it, it which um, um, is uh, pretty easy to access worldwide. And this year's uh, global summit is uh, on October 21st. Uh, it's um, uh, in person, but also live stream. And I was very pleased uh, uh, to meet a faculty member today uh, in the hallway during the break. She actually have um, att attended our uh, global summit two years in a row and enjoyed it. I was very pleased. Uh, uh, um, um, I was very pleased to hear this uh, comment. Uh, that's kind of inspiration that uh, we. Um, that uh, we always feel 
um, important to advance what we do. So I mentioned several organizations uh, you, you heard, right? So why do we have so many organizations? And um, uh, what are they, how are they working together? So basically what we are trying to do is really um, build an integrated and collaborative uh, global network. Each organization has a unique focus and unique uh, mission. And, but together they can leverage and, and uh, work, together, uh, work jointly, effectively advance the same goal. So NFCR supports, um, uh, uh, collaborate with the AFCR for academic research and also a collaborative uh, platform. And NFCR, uh, NFCR all support AIM High um, to uh, bring the um, discovery into uh, commercialization and AIM High has a really effective procedure and process to uh, vet and do, uh, uh, conduct the due diligence to identify those companies that we can bring forward. And also we have a tremendous amount of KOLs uh, networks available through all those um, uh, major award, for example, St. George Prize for Progress in Cancer Research. That's in um, uh, honor of our co-founder, uh, Dr. Albert St. George. It's been 18 years and we, we have a blue ribbon committee that uh, we um, review and uh, select uh, one of the uh, scientists every year uh, that made uh, seminal discoveries but also those uh, discoveries were translated into patient benefit. And we also have the Beacon Award uh, to promote uh, women leaders. And um, this is not just a scientific award, this is actually about promoting women leaders who are um, making contributions from re research, efficacy, clinical, and public uh, um, policy, any uh, sectors of cancer research. And then uh, AIM High Women's Venture Competition, this is a global sourced uh, venture competition. All the uh, women um, leaders, women entrepreneurs uh, can apply and uh, get uh, reviewed and uh, try to uh, compete for the investment. And this particular one, the Brace Award, is uh, focused on helping the oncology companies originated from Asia. And how do we uh, conduct those uh, venture competitions? First, uh, we basically have a very rigorous uh, three-part review and due diligence process, and uh, people, um, the companies can apply. And we have a selection committee. We don't do triage. We read every opportunity, every company that applies get a chance to be reviewed uh, uh, by the, uh, the uh, KOLs um, um, and uh, investors, and they also uh, get tabulated, and then we pick uh, the company, right companies, the, the, the group of the companies, and move uh, to the pitch judging committee. So they get vetted the first step, and the companies that do not move forward, we actually give the feedbacks. Uh, to, to the uh, entrepreneurs so they can improve, improve the, their uh, technologies and re improve their competition skills. And then we have this uh, pitch competition, judging comp uh, committee that uh, um, um, consists of uh, top researchers, uh, clinicians, and uh, IP lawyers, uh, business leaders, entrepreneurs, and, and uh, investors. And this, each uh, uh, company the, as a semi-finalist can have a 10 minutes uh, presentation uh, in front of the uh, judge, um, judge committee and then have a 20 minutes uh, interactive dialogue with the committee members. And that ty this type of uh, competition 
is one of a kind. Very few you have this chance uh, to actually have the dialogue with all the reviewers. And then after that, we select the top uh, companies to go through investment committee uh, review and conduct a co comprehensive due diligence. So this is where we actually bring in the lawyers to look at the company's uh, IP strategy, business and team, and help them to position uh, competitively. And um, since the Brace Award was established in 2019, we have uh, reviewed uh, 99 uh, companies out of China, uh, out of Asia, and 24 uh, companies uh, pitched uh, in front of the judge uh, committees, and uh, 12 uh, contestants recognized. And uh, many times, this kind of recognitions are very important for the companies to attract investors, and um, it's kind of uh, considered uh, endorsement and good, um, you know, good uh, housekeeping seals, and, and um, they can also get uh, um, recognized, uh, get matching from others. And uh, so far we have uh, four companies uh, invested. So you can see it's a very competitive uh, process. So any companies that uh, get through this will, um, will be recognized um, through our um, network, and also we help them to bring uh, the co-investors, and not only we provide um, the investment, we help them to bring the investors um, uh, to support them. So those are just the previous um, uh, slate of uh, companies are going through. So we heard from um, Mr. Huang um, and uh, Professor Yang talking about um, trying to um, uh, build uh, Hong Kong as the uh, next uh, biomedical innovation hub. And so uh, this uh, partnership uh, uh, between AFCR and the CTU is about uh, unlocking, uh, really truly unlocking the potential of uh, Hong Kong uh, as a biomedical um, innovation hub. And we, we, um, we had uh, last year uh, the closed door think tank forum really look at the issues that in Hong Kong um, we uh, encounter what kind of uh, uh, obstacles uh, um, the Hong Kong researchers or um, the system um, uh, encounter right as an obstacle in order to become the efficient uh, uh, global um, a hub. We have a white paper um, uh, from a panel of 16 um, KOLs um, discussed uh, uh, discussed uh, uh, aspect. If you are interested, you can actually go to our website um, to get a, a copy. And but those are uh, the issues uh, um, highlighted during the forum. Most of the VC funded uh, APEC biotech companies they remain constrained on. Me Too and Me Better products. And it's changing right now. It's improving. We are seeing more and more uh, uh, the best, um, uh, in, best in class and um, uh, forcing class um, pipelines coming out of Asia, but this is still relatively uh, small um, uh, number compared to uh, US and Western world. So this is something I hope all of us uh, can uh, collectively uh, work uh, and improve. And um, um, Hong Kong is lacking of international clinical development and commercialization expertise. And uh, this is an area that um, um, Professor Yang and I talk about it. We're going to try to build uh, some uh, programs and training camps that really improve, uh, uh, provide the resources and train people to become uh, better uh, uh, equipped for clinical uh, development. We can also bring in the global ex experts um, and, and um, uh, participate, uh, collaborate and um, show uh, the expertise here. And then um, there's uh, another area is um, lack of a biotech uh, venture competition incubator and accelerators. 
and so that they can systematically, quickly help um, the entrepreneurs to translate those uh, in, um, innovations, and uh, lack of systematic mentorship and the res uh, entrepreneur in residence training programs. Uh, you, many of you probably attended some workshops, some classes, but then after you leave, it's really uh, up to you to struggle. And what we want to do is really provide, uh, um, build an ecosystem platform uh, system that um, can help uh, people systematically. And from all of these uh, efforts, we hope that young people can be encouraged uh, and to continue the uh, life science career and having the hope of success to pursue in the life science sector. So this is a fantastic uh, uh, sector to be in, not only to do good, but could be doing well in the future. And, um, uh, you know, we talk about um, building an ecosystem, innovative uh, system. What needed, uh, what are the elements that are, um, are critically needed? So I, w I just want to uh, highlight some areas that uh, first is we got to have uh, ideas, and then that requires a network of research institutes, high class, and strong university business linkage and the large anchor companies. I think uh, right now, uh, Hong Kong has uh, lots of um, 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 programs encouraging that, and the research institution, eight university here, um, that's a pretty good uh, uh, bubble that we can build on. And then we need to have people and um, environment, and we, we need a, a very productive uh, clusters and sectors and, uh, and um, with a strong effort to coordinate all the programs together. And then, of course, the capital needed a critical mass of uh, uh, the capital uh, funding that are willing to take a high risk and uh, work on the uh, early stage and all the way to a maturity from C to exit. And those are three areas are critically needed for, for making Hong Kong the next global uh, innovation hub. And in US, uh, there are many uh, set, regional um, uh, places like that. The most famous one uh, is uh, the Kendall Square. Uh, in Boston, and Bruce and Raju are all part of the very uh, vibrant, um, uh, productive um, um, innovation system in Kendall Square, and they have all the uh, elements that I mentioned earlier. So this is where I think Hong Kong has a great potential and uh, we have uh, universities, so those are the anchor institutions. Uh, Professor Yang mentioned um, you have the um, CTO um, High Tech uh, 300. That's a pretty good seed uh, to uh, grow. And then we have a tremendous amount of government support um, uh, you heard uh, from um, Lillian Zhong. And uh, Hong Kong is also a very vibrant um, uh, financial center, um, and uh, uh, lots of programs uh, connecting to the world. And so all we need is um, systematic uh, incubation and uh, systematic uh, platform to, to work together and build Hong Kong um, up and uh, make Hong Kong uh, become uh, next uh, global uh, Hub. And this just uh, sh showed um, all the advan regional advantages uh, you have and technological advantages uh, you have here. So I just wanted to encourage all the uh, faculties and students here, uh, uh, great potential. All we need um, is, um, is working together. Uh, and by doing that, this um, a partnership uh, with um, CTU is uh, a, a good example that uh, we, we can um, have um, efforts uh, originating from um, Hong Kong, but connecting to the world. 
and uh, we will build a mentor and coaching program. We'll build an uh, ecosystem of early stage investors, and we also will have a systematic expertise uh, and guidance um, and, and help um, the young entrepreneurs to, um, to uh, um, develop uh, the first in class uh, innovative drugs and technologies and leverage uh, in, uh, resources from worldwide to advance the development and commercialization of drugs uh, in Hong Kong. And among all the organizations, center part is a good partnership that we built today. So join us um, in our effort and build a collaborative uh, platform in Asia and uh, empower cancer researchers, empower entrepreneurs, and bring life-saving innovations to cancer patients, not only just here, but worldwide. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bob.